What's going on everyone? Today I've got a bit of a side quest. I've got a Milwaukee M18 oscillating power tool here that I need to mount to a height adjustable table to be used in a production type environment. Now, I need to hold this or mount it to the table. The table is just a flat fixture table that's got threaded holes all over it, which that is the easy part. Holding this is the harder part. Now, since this is gonna be in a production type situation, I need to be as strong and reliable as possible. So I'm going to take and use some new filament that I got from Bamboo Labs. This is the PPACF. This is one of their new like, engineering grade materials. So it's more expensive, but it's also wildly strong as far as the stats go on the white paper that they produced for it. So I'm gonna take the opportunity to use that for the first time on this, which is a, a high stress application, which should be where it shines the most. Now I'm gonna take the M18 here. I'm gonna scan it with my RevoPoint POP3 3D scanner to try and give me an accurate mesh of the handle, which is where I'm gonna be mounting it to this fixture you know, table that I've got using here. So. I'm gonna to take today and we're gonna get this scanned and then I'm gonna take it into Fusion 360 and show you just a, a quick way to take that 3D scan data and make a mount out of it with as you know, minimal steps as possible, well, as minimal steps as I'm capable of or aware of, I should say, at this point. So that's gonna be our task for today. Nothing that crazy, but an opportunity to show you some 3D scanning, some new filament, and my favorite, Autodesk Fusion. So. Let's dive into this project and get something done. So we started off this project by taking the tool and double face taping it down to my turntable. This is the turntable that comes with the RevoPoint POP3. So I just got it as centered as possible with this kind of funky angle and powdered off of my servo tester for USB power. Now here you can see I sprayed the tool with some dry shampoo to act as a developer spray. Just let it spin a handful of times and trying to get as much of the important part of the tool as I could. From there, I did have to do a little bit of cleanup just by getting rid of some of these, you know, extra floating areas of the mesh. And then one thing I needed to do is identify the area where I think that I was going to clamp the actual 3D printed parts that I was going to design and make sure that the mesh was solid in those areas. So after processing the scan, I go in here and I do the fill holes command, but only in the areas where, again, I think that I may be clamping the tool in some way. The rest of it, I'm not really all that concerned about. But after that, I took this mesh and exported it and then brought that portion into Fusion 360. So here in the actual Fusion 360, I'm gonna use the forms tool. So I created a line that goes straight down the center of the tool after centering the mesh in approximately uh, the origin of the part. I took the form and created a pipe or a tube over top of it. And then I'm just moving it into the areas where I'm most concerned. I don't care as much about the battery end or up closer to the head. From here, I did add some more subdivisions. Everywhere the lines cross is a point, and I'm gonna be using those points to try and get some sort of you know, approximation of the shape of this handle by using the pull command. So it's gonna take and it's gonna drop all those points down on the closest area of the mesh to it. This is just a super simple command, an easy way to take 3D scan data and pull a usable shape out of it. The more subdivisions you use, the closer and more accurate that surface will be. But I also didn't need it to be so crazy accurate that it was gonna have all this really fine detail that I needed to 3D print. This just gives me a nice usable uh, surface that I can use to create the solid parts from there, keeping you know the 3D printing simple and not overly complex. And for what I'm gonna be doing, this is gonna work out really well. As far as adjusting the surfaces as I'm doing here, the forms, this is more of an art than a science and I just got it pretty close. You can see it you know, just outside of the shape of the tool from there. After creating a plane, roughly where I think that the clamp needs to go, I did an intersection sketch to give me that profile. From there, I just offset that profile by 14 millimeters to give me the thickness of the part that I wanted to create. And that'll give me a nice area to, to use for the actual solid that I'm gonna do. So I offset that surface again, took, and now I'm gonna do a loft between those two surfaces, and that's gonna end up being my solid area. I need to do this one more time offset by 100 millimeters to give me the area for the second clamp. Just two areas is all that I planned to use. Now it did make these two pieces solid for some reason, so I ended up turning those sketches back on and doing a couple of lofted cuts, same way that I did to create the solid, but just doing a cut instead of an extrude. 
these are the shapes that I think will be a close enough approximation to give me the clamping force. Here I did a cut and removed two millimeters of the surface, so that will actually give me that pinching force. Now I need a way to connect the two halves over top of the tool, so I just did a pattern along path. There's a million ways you could do this operation. It's all just up to personal preference. Maybe I wouldn't do it this way next time. Maybe I would, doesn't really matter. I did a 2.6 millimeter tube or pipe, and that's what I'm gonna use to do a subtract from the main base. I upsized the upper portion to 3.5 millimeters to give me the pass through. And then here I'm using another circle to create the counter bores to hide the screw heads inside of the other half. I offset the starting point by about six millimeters to give me that strength for the actual screw head to, to use to clamp against. Now I needed to create the feature that would actually give me the ability to mount it to the table. Once I did one side, I just did a project to the other side. I had to make a few little modifications to get it to work. Extruded that and then combined those solids to the other half of the clamp. I did a little bit of cleanup by adding some fillets before I went and created the holes that would actually allow this to mount to the table. A couple of large holes for the M6 bolts that are used to mount this to the actual table and then cleaned it up with some more chamfers and fillets. Did a little chamfer on the edge of the bolt hole just to give it a little cleaner 3D print. But from there, I was able to take these solids and bring them into Bamboo Studio. I did the initial print in PLA just to double check fitment, make sure everything was going to work before I did the PPA bamboo filament, which is just that much more engineering grade, extremely strong, very rigid, overall a super interesting filament to use. Mounted everything up, make sure everything was as expected before doing the final print and doing a quick test. So I did my initial print in PLA just to double check that everything works before using the you know more expensive filament. Seems like an easy choice to prove a you know fitment before going all in with the final print. Once I had the 3D scan, it really just helps make everything much easier by taking and just doing a quick form. I could have used the mesh itself and done it for a more accurate, like very precise key in type style. But then you're also just relying on accuracy of the, the scan to be just perfect on. And this just gives me a general shape that I could give myself a little bit of ability. I cut a small section out of the clamping area just to allow the print itself to give the clamping force to it. And that worked perfectly. I gave it two millimeters to you know give for clamping, which is quite a bit, but based on the size of this, I felt like that was, uh, that was gonna do it. This table here is a table that I've used before in production and it will physically mount to the base so that nothing can move. And then I can just set this exactly where I need it to be. Is this the you know, most ideal platform? Maybe not, but also for me, it kind of is. It's very rigid, it's very steady. There's no play in it at all. And it's got a very precise uh, height adjustment. I need to have a blade, not this blade specifically, set to multiple heights to trim some pieces that are coming out of a vacuum forming machine. So this is pretty easy. It's just a quick way to get things done. It's not a finished edge for like a, a consumer good. It's just something that needs to be done. A rotary tool would also work, but the wheels on those sometimes tend to gum up on plastics. So the oscillating blades just seem to work really well. And this will just give me a much more repeatable and even cut and one that I can set to a dependable height. Little thing like that. Pretty simple project overall. To do the design work, probably took me 30-ish minutes. It probably took me uh, 15 minutes to set up the 3D scan and actually get it scanned while talking on a video. So some extra time added for that. So overall, I probably got about 45 minutes in this, not including the print time itself and I'd call that a win. Before I load the PPA into the bamboo, it's empty because the filament is drying. It does recommend drying for the best performance. So took it right out of the box, put it into the dryer. And while that's drying, it's got two and a half hours left on the drying cycle. So I am going to go put a battery in this and just fire it up. See if I notice anything that the vibration of this tool is going to cause issues with and that I should do one more revision before sending it to the final print. But if I don't notice anything, I'll get these parts printed in the PPA and I'll show you the final process of this thing in action to round out this video.
get a power driver. 